Okay, a lot of people asked, how do you start? How much should you save? Was it hard to qualify? Was the price more than you expected? So basically, here's how I bought a house. Welcome to today's video. I hope you are as excited as I am. I have been wanting to do this video for so long, ever since, even before I purchased this home, I knew this was something I wanted to talk about because for about a year, I have learned so much about the home buying process and the first time home buying process. So I'm really excited to be able to sit down with you today and go over some of the biggest things that I've learned, things that no one really tells you to expect during the process or things that I wish someone would have told me. And I also went over over to my Instagram and asked if you had any specific questions regarding the first time home buying process. So at the end of the video, I'll go into Instagram and answer the questions that you submitted as well. But if you are new here and this is the first video you're coming across of mine, welcome. My name's Michaela. I'm 26 years old. I live in Minnesota. And this last year in 2021, I bought my first house. I documented the whole journey here on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to link that playlist down below for you. It starts literally the day that I got approved. We tour home. We put in some offers. We get an offer that is accepted. And then I vlogged the entire renovation process as well. So if you like home renovation before and after transformation, remodeling videos, I have all of that as well. And I'm also going to be filming a video all about how much it really costs to renovate a house. That will be going up next. So definitely subscribe so you do not miss that video. That being said, I hope that you are subscribed if watching this video because I have a ton more content coming that I hope that you will enjoy. I like to dabble in a little bit of like advice, finances, home renovation video, like transformation videos, lifestyle, vlogs. I try to cover it all. So I have a lot of content for you. Definitely go check it out. Just one more thing. Please make sure you are following me on Instagram at McKayK17. Like you saw in this video, I went over to Instagram to ask if you had any questions. So if you want to get more involved in my content, definitely follow me on Instagram so you have the opportunity to submit questions and whatnot for videos like this one. I was living in an apartment for three years and I primarily spent those years building my financial stability, saving and diving into the home buying process, which was definitely swifter than expected given that we were in the middle of a pandemic, not to mention that the market has been crazy. The home buying process seems a little bit contradictory to me because it definitely takes a long time and you need to be patient and start sooner than expected. But at the same time, it goes really, really fast, especially with the market these days. So looking back, I feel like it all happened so quickly and I'm so grateful for my full experience. I wrote out a list of things that nobody tells you about the home buying process that I want to share with you on my phone. So I'm gonna be looking down at that. Also, if you do wanna check out the home that I bought, I do have a house tour up and a ton of like transformation videos. I do need to film a finished house tour now that it's renovated and furnished. But if you wanna see what the place looked like when I moved in, I'll link that video above as well as down below. But buying a home in your 20s, specifically I started the process in my young 20s. I was like 24, I believe, when I really was like, let's buy a house. So basically, here's how I did it. Here's some tips and tricks and things that I would recommend to anyone who's purchasing a house for the first time. Here are some things that I learned as a first time home buyer this last year. Number one, Unfortunately, you've got to plan ahead. I say unfortunately because sometimes it's really tricky not to have that instant gratification or want something so badly but know that you have to wait or know that you have to save up or build up high credit for whatever factors, you know? It's not something that happens overnight and perhaps you're not in the happiest living situation. I know personally I was living in an apartment that was managed by my ex-boyfriend. Yeah. I don't know if I recommend dating a landlord, but uh, after three years of living in that complex, I was ready for change. I was ready to move out and move on. I just had to be very patient and focused on what was in my control. And what was in my control was earning money, saving that money, building a higher credit score, and really prepping and planning to purchase that house when the time was right. I do have a full video on how to have like the highest credit score ever when you're in your young 20s because this was probably the thing that patiently took the longest and before you apply to be approved for a mortgage you want to make sure that that credit score is as high as humanly possible so that video that i made almost a year ago it goes into depth like real detail on how i achieved a really high credit score for my age range i don't want to give away 
specifically what it is, but it's up there and it wasn't always like that. Definitely focusing on how to improve that credit score because that's going to really affect what you're going to be pre-approved for, for a mortgage. That's something you can work on today, even if you think you won't be ready to purchase a house in a year or a year and a half or two years, you know, it's gonna take some time. Not only that, but to be approved for a mortgage, you're gonna need at least like two years of stable income. For me, this was really tricky to prove because I am self-employed and so my paychecks come from YouTube and Google and miscellaneous brand deals and all these other online platforms that by themselves don't show exactly how much I made. I didn't have the consistent tax returns to show. Even though I could say, I make this much a month, I didn't have the paper trail for a while to prove that. And I'm really glad that I actually reached out to a mortgage lender, I think like six months before I reached out to another one that actually ended up working out. But when I first reached out, it was November of 2020 still, and they asked me a ton of questions and basically told me, you know, like contact us after you file your taxes for this year, and then we can see what you qualify for. I'm really glad I contacted them because it helped me figure out what I needed to do. And it gave me that drive to file my taxes and earn even more money while I still had the time. Off of that, this is more so for people that are self employed or have a unique job situation like I do, if you have write-offs on your taxes, I didn't know this, but if you have a lot of write-offs on your taxes, obviously like you want to write off a ton so you don't have to pay as much. But I guess when you're applying for a mortgage, they don't look at how much you've earned before you write off because technically those write-offs because technically those write-offs are paying your business or whatever your job is. A mortgage company can only look at how much you make after the write-offs are applied, which is usually a lower number. And because you are self-employed, it's not always as accurate. So because I knew this ahead of time, I purposefully did not write off a lot for my 2020 taxes going into 2021. And I did vlog this. So if you wanna see more about how I file taxes, I'll also link that above as well as down below. Definitely just be careful with write-offs if you are self-employed like I am. And then just be conscious about your credit score and trying to improve that while you have the time because that's something within your control that you can do now even if you are not ready so you know like using a bit of your card every single month paying them off in full being added as an authorized user who has perhaps a longer or better credit history than you that can help if you're in a position to be able to do that increasing your total line of credit as long as you don't increase your spending and that all takes time so that's something that I would recommend anyone to work on even if buying a house isn't even on your radar for a while number two finding people who are good to work with as in specifically a mortgage lender and real estate agent. Your team should make you feel like buying a house is possible and easy and that you're important. I cannot tell you the contrast between having good people on your team and having people that I wouldn't recommend being on your team. So when I first started this process, I was recommended a specific mortgage bank to work with that honestly didn't make me feel respected or treated well. I think my age definitely kind of threw them off because I was just like, I'm self-employed, I'm 25, hee hee, you know? And I don't think they took me seriously when I was like, look, I can afford this and I know I can. And the mortgage lender definitely made self-employment seem like such a big struggle that was going to keep me from purchasing a home. Now flash forward a few months, my parents recommend this awesome real estate agent, which if you are in the Twin Cities, definitely DM me and I can hook you up with an awesome team. This realtor was fantastic. She was on top of everything and she personally connected me to a mortgage lender who honestly was wonderful, cannot recommend him enough. He never made me feel like it would be troublesome that I was self-employed. If anything, when he asked how much I make being self-employed, his response was, wow, I'm so proud of you, kid. That's amazing. Like, it was such a big difference between his praise and this other bank's huge, like, size and confusion, being like, oh, like, I don't know how we're gonna make this work. So definitely finding the right people to work with and don't be afraid to kind of say like, hey, like, thank you for your time, but I think I'm gonna go in another direction if you're not clicking with who you're working with because you're kind of trusting them to help you find a house or to help you get approved. And if your gut feeling is telling you it's not right, it's not right. To timeline this a little bit better, I filed my taxes in February. As soon as I got my tax return and I was ready to prove that I could afford a house, I applied for a mortgage with that mortgage lender who was amazing. And once I got approved, which 
took a few hours, honestly. It was so quick and easy. Then my real estate agent was like, let's go look at houses. Do you have any in mind that you wanna see today? And we started the journey quick, and honestly, I think it was just a month of looking at houses before I closed and actually got this house, which was amazing. Like it literally took only a month. And I have the vlogs, like I said, of that whole journey. But once I was at the house touring process and looking at homes, my next tip of advice is to not tour houses that you know aren't the one. I cannot tell you how many houses I looked at on Zillow, how many houses my real estate agent sent me, and you know, based on images alone, whether or not you're vibing with the place. There were definitely some houses that I toured where even before I went, I kind of knew that I probably wouldn't put an offer in. I tried not to waste anybody's time. I didn't wanna drive out to a place if I knew it wasn't the one. And you know, sometimes you really can't tell based on images alone. But I would say, if based on the photos alone, you're already thinking this could be the one, if you're not thinking that, don't go look at it because it's probably not. And there were definitely some showings that I went to where I knew I probably wouldn't like it. And uh, big surprise, I didn't like it when I saw it in person either. And going off of that, number four, when you know, you know. This is what my real estate agent told me a lot. Whenever we'd look at houses, she'd be like, it's okay, like when you know, you know. Like, don't worry, don't feel bad if this isn't it because when you walk in, you're gonna know. And I've heard that so many times and you think, okay, sure, whatever. Like that won't happen to me probably. But I'm telling you, as soon as I saw this listing on Zillow alone, I felt like a weird pull to it. And I'll be honest, the house that I chose was not the house that I described to my realtor. It didn't have everything that I told her I wanted. It was in a very different price range than I expected, but I saw it online and I just knew it was mine. I know not everyone believes in this, but if you do, listen to the universe, listen to the signs around you, listen to your gut or your intuition. When I toured this house for the first time, the whole drive over, it was raining. As soon as I entered this specific like city that I'm in, the store cleared up, the clouds parted, the sun came out, there was a rainbow. I felt like it was such a big sign that like this is where I'm supposed to be. Then I get inside this house to tour it and there was a cat right by the door. I love cats, I own two of them and this was the first tour or showing that had a cat here. So that was another big sign where I was like, oh my God, this is the one. And then I toured it and fell in love and I knew right away to put an offer in. However, number five, just because my process happened really swiftly and quick and and I kind of like had that when you know, you know moment. Don't rush it. There were definitely some houses that I saw where I could have put an offer in. I could have been like, yeah, this will work. This is honestly perfect. Like it has everything I wanted. So why wouldn't I put an offer in? Don't rush it. I mean, this is an investment. The perfect house that's meant for you is waiting and it's out there. For a while, I truly believed that my Forever House was a completely different house that was on the market when I was looking. If you watch those vlogs, you'll know that it was on the market for a really long time because it was insanely overpriced. And I thought that was it. I thought it was my house. And the second I got approved, I put an offer in and I tried and I rushed it. And I'm so glad I ended up not getting that house because it wasn't for me. It was twice as much money. I think financially I'd be in a very different place right now if I stretched myself that thin to move into a house that was stunningly well done and beautiful and new and almost a million dollars, but it was a blessing in disguise really that I didn't get that house. It's like dating, you know? Like when you think someone's the one, but then you meet somebody better and you're like, oh, everything else was a lesson. I don't know. Number six, this has to do specifically with an inspection. So when I put an offer in on this house, it was a non-contingent offer, meaning that I did want an inspection done, but it didn't matter what the inspection said. Like I would still purchase the house. We did this because the market was pretty crazy. Homeowners are gonna take the best offer Offer. So if someone has a contingent offer where it's like, yeah, we'll buy the house, but if something's wrong with it and the inspection comes back poorly, we're gonna back out. So we did it in a way where I was locked in, which is what I wanted. However, when you get an inspection, you have the option of also paying for a radon test, which basically is like a chemical that comes up through the cement or bottom of older homes and this is a risk of hazardous air or gas or chemicals don't quote me, I'm gonna find something online that explains it better, but it can put you at a higher risk for cancer and whatnot. Honestly, some people in my life said, you know, you probably don't need to, it's a newer home, it's probably fine. But on the safe side, I paid for a radon test and it actually came back positive, which 
was bad. There was radon present in the home. So I'm really glad that I paid the extra money to get this test done because they got it fixed and I feel safer living here now than I would have if I just ignored that and I had toxic air in this home for like my kitties and myself. Like it's just better to be safe than sorry, especially when it's going to be your house. Number seven, take the final walkthrough seriously. So I did vlog this and that is in the playlist down below when I had the final walkthrough. Mine was a unique situation because the owners were running behind for moving out. So I actually had the opportunity to meet the owners of this home during my final walkthrough. It was really great actually, because I got to say thank you so much for choosing me. They were really excited for me. It was these two old ladies that had lived here for a while and I was kind of like this new cycle you know like a young first-time home buyer that was just getting started and this was like their final home before downsizing to a community so it was really cool I just was able to tell them I love their house and thank you so much for choosing me and they were excited that cats were gonna live in this house because they had cats so it was a cool experience but because they were present and there was so much chaos going on while they were moving out and movers were here my realtor and I kind of just quickly walked through the house everything looked fine and honestly the final walkthrough wouldn't have changed anything I was getting the keys in just a few hours myself but after I got the keys and I was settling in I started to notice some stuff literally the next day that I didn't notice during the final walkthrough like one of the recessed lighting light bulbs in the ceiling fell out and was just dangling and they're high ceilings the light fixture above me was dangling the sliding door in the sunroom didn't have a functional lock so i couldn't lock the sliding door and the key to the front door was sticky and didn't always work so i had to enter through the garage only so definitely don't be afraid to like test all the nooks and crannies during that final walkthrough my mom told me that when she moved into what was my childhood home back in the 90s they didn't run all of the appliances and then when they moved in learned that the washer didn't work and there were all these little like things that didn't work about the house so take the final walkthrough seriously and overall biggest tip is to work are you serious and overall my biggest tip is just to work hard and be patient focus on what's within your own control but also dream and manifest it i firmly believe i manifested this house and if you followed my content you saw how much i worked on manifesting it and the thing about manifesting is you don't just sit back and be like i am manifesting a mansion and then not work for it no you put it out there and say i am manifesting like a mansion and then you act the way that somebody who lives in a mansion or purchases one would act and you work hard and you earn a lot of money you save that money and you apply what needs to be applied to also manifest it if that makes sense so it's a balance between working hard and believing that you can achieve it let's get into the questions that you sent over on instagram because there were a lot of really good ones that i'm glad you asked and i did just post the story last night so i'm sorry if you submitted a my cats so i do apologize if you submit a question and i don't see it until after filming this video but i'll try to answer as much as i can so let's get started how many offers did you put in before they accepted yours i feel like i got pretty lucky i only submitted two offers before the second one was accepted i put an offer in sort of as a backup offer for a deal that was already in contract so it was kind of unfair it was the house that i wanted for so long and then as soon as i was approved somebody else's offer was submitted and accepted so we put in a backup offer if they backed out for any reason which they didn't and then i put in an offer on this house and i got very lucky that's why i firmly believe it was meant to be and i knew that this house was meant to be mine because they made us wait like three or four days after submitting the offer, like they left it open for more offers. However, I was the first offer that went in and I went in honestly just at asking price, but I offered a pretty high amount of earnest money and was non-contingent to the inspection. Yeah, it was kind of like a, let's just go in at offering price, see what happens. But I think there was a detail in my offer saying that if anybody else put in a higher price, we would match it or go X amount over. I had a really great realtor that wrote up an awesome deal for me. It was pretty nice because the owners of this house 
respected that I was the first offer and they accepted mine. And you can hear in the vlog when I find out that my offer was approved and I was gonna get the house, my real estate agent says that they accepted my offer even though there was a higher offer without an inspection that wanted the house. Like they still respected that mine was first. An offer that was higher priced and without an inspection and they still chose ours. That part blows my mind. That's crazy. Yeah. I know. Wow, it just kind of shows how meant to be it was. Maybe they liked knowing that I was a first time home buyer. That's why I just feel like it was meant to be slash I got very lucky, but just two. But I know the market's crazy, so that's why I feel like I got lucky because some people put in so many offers. Like my parents put in, I think like 14 different offers before finally getting one accepted. So it can take a while. Okay, a lot of people asked, how do you start? How can I get started? What is the first step? The first step is getting pre-approved for a mortgage. Without this, you won't be able to work with a real estate agent. You won't be able to tour. No agent's going to work with you if you aren't already pre-approved because you don't even know if you can afford a house, you know? So the first step would be to contact a mortgage lender, find a bank, you can Google some that are in your area or some that people recommend, ask around. If you're in my area, I can recommend an awesome mortgage lender to you. Definitely reach out to a bank and just ask like, hey, I think I wanna buy a house. What can I afford? You'll fill out this application. They'll look at your income and your tax returns and they'll ask how much money you're able to put down or how much you have set aside. And they'll be able to tell you the range of what price you'll be able to afford for a house. Once you're approved, then you can work with a realtor and start looking at houses. That would be the first active step to the process. The first more passive step would be to save and have that consistent history of income underneath your belt so that you will be approved for a mortgage. And there are a lot of tips and things that can help you be approved. I'm sure if you Google them, you'll find a ton, but just having that high credit score, having a good history of income, and then having a lot of money set aside to put down as a down payment, those are like the three really big things that will help you get pre-approved for a mortgage. Going off of that, how much should you save before looking at homes? I'm going to talk more about this in the next video that's going to go up all about how much I like actually spent buying this house but I would say just save as much as you can and then once you hit a milestone where you feel like ooh, this might be a good down payment or I feel like I've sp saved enough then try to get pre-approved for a mortgage it will just range on so many factors you know are you buying a house by yourself or do you have a partner and the amount that you can put down kind of just affects the loan that you're applying for because it'll help you get a better loan if you put more money down up front Personally, I set aside 150K before applying for a mortgage and getting approved. And this gave me a pretty comfortable range of houses that I could afford. I would recommend aiming for 100K, but maybe starting to like reach out and talk to some people in finance once you hit like 50K. It's just so specific to your situation and your job and your income and your household. If you have a partner or someone that you're purchasing a house with, if you are selling a house and purchasing another one and that equity, like there's a lot, but that's personally what I did. Was it hard to qualify being self-employed? Oh my God, so hard. And I do talk about this a little bit in this video, but it's just so much harder for a bank to honestly take you seriously, especially if they don't have any experience with self-employed clients or just are maybe like a little bit more traditional and older minded. And that was kind of my first experience with that bank that I ended up not going with because they totally made it seem like it would be impossible for me to be approved, even though I was making a lot of money at the time and could afford a pretty comfortable home. And then when I went to the right bank and they made it so easy, the hard thing about being self-employed was that I just had a proof that I was actually earning the money I was claiming I was earning. I had to send in so many more bank statements and pay stubs, history of YouTube and Google and brand deals and PayPal. I had to download a lot of invoices from how I was getting paid through PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, all my bank accounts to show like the consistency of how much money was going in and the flow of that because I don't have an employer or like pay stubs to prove that. But I had a mortgage lender that really believed in me and made it so easy. I mean, like it's a win for the bank too. They want to work with you because then they're making money by the interest that you'd be paying in that loan. So don't let anyone make you feel like it's difficult because it should be easy. When did you know it was the right time? Honestly, I kind of felt this is a, <laughs> sorry for the metaphor, but I started to feel like a plant 
that was so outgrown of its pot. Like I felt like my roots were just getting way too big for the space that I was in. I knew it was the right time when financially I was saving a lot and wanted to make a really big investment because it is painful sometimes like putting your money towards rent and just paying thousands of dollars a month into thin air. Like you're not getting that money back and that's what sucks about renting is you're just like paying rent and it's not going into equity. It's not like going towards paying off your mortgage, it's going to whoever owns the property and they're making income off of you. So that was the hardest part and I hated paying rent and losing that money every single month. I would much rather be putting that into a house and I was actually kind of browsing other apartments for fun, more like luxury apartments that were a lot more expensive. And I knew that a mortgage would be more affordable, cheaper than these apartments, and the money would be going somewhere. So it would be like a long-term investment. That's kind of when I knew. And when I was at a financially stable spot where I was ready to make that big leap. Is it better to buy a fixer upper home or one that doesn't need much changes? Honestly, I don't know if there is a better or worse situation. It just kind of depends on your price, what you're looking at. I wasn't specifically hoping for a fixer upper and I don't consider mine to be a fixer upper. I know that I made a lot of renovation changes, but it's not like it was in a horrible state before. It was just a bit outdated and not the style that I was going for. I was originally just looking at newer homes that didn't need any renovations, but they were so much more expensive and definitely at like the end of what I could afford. So my mortgage would have been like four times as much than what this one currently is and I'm so glad that I went with a more fixer upper home than a expensive one because the mortgage is so much more affordable it's honestly cheaper than most rent prices in my area and I was able to renovate everything quickly but again no one is forcing you to do that quickly so you can kind of budget out what you want to renovate and it's more fun if you enjoy like home renovation content I totally love the idea of purchasing a fixer upper and fixing it and either living in it or selling it or renting it out like like, there's so much more pride that goes into a house that you fixed up to be like, yeah, I did that. Like I put in the hard work, the sweat and tears, like the love, the battery died and I'm not sure where I left off, but a fixer upper is definitely fun if you enjoy home improvement projects. However, it just kind of depends, I guess, on your price range because also sometimes if you find a home that is low in cost because it needs to be fixed up. There could be some underlying issues when you try to fix the home that could cost you a lot of money. Mold or water damage or anything like that. In the long run, it was definitely cheaper because my mortgage is so much more affordable than what it could have been. Yeah, I guess there are pros and cons to both. I think it's definitely fun to have a house that you wanna make some changes to just to make it your own and to have that like heart warming like oh like when we moved in we painted everything and like we put in the love to make this a home you know like that type of energy kind of going off of that was the price more than you expected honestly the price was a lot lower than expected i don't know how much i want to actually tell you this is a four bedroom four bath two car garage home in a beautiful area dream come true really for what it is i think it was totally more affordable than expected and i was ready to put down so much more than needed i don't know if i mentioned this either but it was on the market the day that i put in an offer i was the first offer to come in it hit zillow and right away i was like let's go look at it that afternoon so it was only on the market for a couple hours before i put in an offer when i got my home appraised it actually came back in higher value than the listing price and what I purchased it at. So even if I were to sell it now, which I do not plan to do for a very, very long time, I would still make money right now because it already is higher in value, not to mention all of the work that I put in to renovate it. But it will be interesting to see how much it sells for or what the value will be in like 10, 20 years because I watch a lot of finance videos on YouTube and Andre Jick mentions, he talks a lot about how homes are all going to be like a million dollars in a few years and with inflation and whatnot, it's just gonna be wild to see. Did you anticipate how much all the furniture and accessories would cost? Yes, I had a lot of money set aside and saved for renovations and furnishings, but I also knew that there was no rush and I really wanted to make wise decisions when it came to purchasing furniture for this house I honestly didn't furnish a lot of it. I guess the sunroom and the living room were like the two rooms that I bought everything for. But for the most part, I kept the furniture from my apartment. For example, like the couch that I'm sitting on 
was originally so much more than what I purchased it for, but I waited until Labor Day weekend so that they were having like a huge sale. And then I used a coupon that I was holding onto for a while. So I got this baby for like 50% less than the listed cost. And I think it was listed at almost $5,000, not gonna lie. But I definitely did anticipate like saving for furnishing and all of that. The rest of the questions are all renovation and money based. So I'm going to answer those in the next video, but I hope that you learned something and thank you so much for watching. Definitely comment down below. I would love to hear your stories. Are you looking for a house soon? Are you just interested in this content? Or have you purchased a house in the past and what was your experience like? Because everyone's experience is going to be different. So just because this was mine doesn't mean it's going to be yours. It's just so unique to everyone's experience and the market literally day by day. But that was a little bit on my experience as a first time home buyer. I learned a lot. It definitely makes me want to put more into investing in real estate down the road. I should probably focus on paying off this mortgage first, but it taught me a lot that I'm definitely going to apply the next time I purchase a home. I would love to get into renting as in like purchasing property and then renting it out. And maybe we can chat more about that when the time comes. So please make sure you are subscribed. Don't miss out on that video coming soon on how much it costs to purchase a home and then check out the playlist of all the other home content listed down below with all of that being said i'll see you real soon with that next video i'm going to film it right now but have a wonderful rest of your day i'll see you soon bye